So I guess uh, Nima got a good score here. Good. <laughs> got a superstar. Uh, yes, survey. There is a survey uh, in the channel that you can fill it out and it will help us to improve the workshop and all the session as well. So please fill it out after the workshop. <laughs> Uh, good. So, uh, here I want to talk about something which for me is going to be almost uh, well, like one of those a stepping stone for me for the next session actually, but that's something that can be helpful as well. So far, the thing that you were trying to do was how can we learn the data? In different way. One of them was okay. You can fit a Gaussian uh, model, or you can use a GMM, or you can uh, use one SVM to learn a boundary around it, or you can just ignore the normal data, use isolation forest to try to find those isolated ones. So, so far the thing that you are trying to do was like, how can we learn the data in a way that we can kind of separate those who are not part of the data. And that was the whole thing. It was like a learning the data. So and the, the thing that we can think about is like, yes, we don't have any label data. And if the assumption is the data is clean and you have, and if you remove those uh, other layer from it, and, or maybe it, the data set, or the task is semi-supervised one, which means uh, is clean. So how can I make sure that the boundary that I'm making around my data is actually correct because as, as you know as you, as you even have seen when a stream try to fit a boundary around it or GMM try to learn a distribution of, of it but the thing is they had no idea what should be the likelihood when you have it when you have nothing in, in different part of the, uh, the, the your space one of the thing that maybe you can do would be one of the dumbest one would be as I said here shuffling it means you have lots of real data. The thing I'm trying to do here is instead of saying that how can I make a boundary around it or how can I learn this data, I can say I want to make lots of other data in that space and then I want to learn the, the maybe the boundary or, uh, or any kind of separation technique that I can tell the difference between the normal one and not normal one and then use that to be able to find any kind of outlier in my data. So in a way, I'm, I'm changing my unsupervised or semi-supervised task to a supervised one by generating new fake data. The reason I'm saying that is kind of be a stepping stone for me because uh, here I want to generate fake data in a dumbest way possible, which is shuffling. Then you can say, why not? I have some assumption about my data, and based on that assumption, I can generate lots of other things. It's like, okay, if all the people in your data, their age is between 10 and 20, then I know that. Then I can, instead of shuffling, I can make lots of people with age more than 20 and say, these are all fake. They are not part of my distribution. Or if you know anything about your data, you can, in a lot better way, in more heuristic way, you can generate new fake data which then it will, it will help you to find a boundary. Next step would be, how can I actually use the data to generate fake data, which then for the next session, we'll talk about GANs. And we'll say, one of the things that GANs try to do is try to generate a new sample, which they are not real, but is based on the distribution of your data. And the, the, the discriminator is a, super, is a supervised model that the only job that model has is to be able to tell the difference between real and fake. Here, I want to make that fake one myself. I want to make a shuffle data set. Here I'm saying that, see, the credit card, a scale one is I'm just a scale it, all, all the features with between zero and one is like a, just a normalization. We're saying that, okay, uh, that's the data. Here I'm say, saying that remove all those, uh, all those, uh, sample which they are uh, they are outlayer 
So it's kind of try. Uh, then I'm making the credit card to be like a clean data set for me. So it would be like a semi-supervised task from now on. And then I'm just saying that, okay, make a new one and then shuffle it. The only thing I'm doing is like, okay, all those sample, shuffle all the column. Then you, I'm making a new data set, size exactly similar, is exactly identical, but the value of, are all shuffled. It's like the dumbest way you can generate data. And then I'm saying that, okay, the label for all the things that I had in my normal one is zero because they're not out there. But for this one, oh, they're all like not normal, they're fake. So maybe for me, they're all out there. So then I have a supervised task, super balanced one as well, because half of the data are normal, half of them are not. And then the only thing I'm doing is, is I'm just fitting, let's see, actually, let me actually run it. And the only thing I'm doing is, see, I, and then I pick a simplest model over just one, like a hidden, like a neural network with just one hidden layer and the size of the hidden layer was just 64, something completely random. I just put it there. And then I want to learn it. I'm just saying, okay, now actually compute the result. While it's learning and doing all the things, which I'm not sure how long it will take, I'm going to say the thing I'm doing here like that. I'm just, I'm just making a model. As I said, it can be anything. It can be more sophisticated. It can be multiple layer neural network. It can be even those random forest XGBoost model that we talk about. It can be any kind of supervised one. So we are, I are changing the question here. And then I'm training the model. I'm fitting the model. And then I'm saying that, okay, what is the prediction of the thing that you just learned? And then that's the real data, noisy data. What is the prediction on that? Because then that Y label is, that, is, is a true one. Then I want to see, is it actually working? If I just shuffle them, how, what will happen? Any, any idea here? What will be the result? Any idea? Since it's still working? No? Nope. What is your assumption about the result here? As I said, I just shuffle the data per column. Per column, yes, all the feature, the value in, in each feature. I just shuffle them. So all the samples are kind of like a super noisy. Did you sh shuffle them just by their index or by their? Per, the value each, per column. Each one is now misaligned with all the others? Yes. So it's, it means per feature, I just shuffle. The other feature, shuffle. So just, So it means I'm not adding new feature to it. I'm not saying that, oh, and if all the ages are from 10, 20, I'm not adding if 50 or, I don't know, 40, I'm saying that's, that's not normal. I'm just saying that just shuffle this thing that they have. If that's what I'm saying. It's like a, the dumbest, the not heuristic one at all. It's like just shuffle. So all the value will be uh, still part of the data. If I, if I make the histogram of it, it will be exactly identical per feature because I'm not changing, need, I'm not changing any value. I'm just saying that shuffle. So everything feature-wise is identical. The relation is yours. And then I'm just, the only thing is like, if you just shuffle the feature, so it means if you do any kind of, I don't know, any techniques that is based on it, treat each, each uh, feature individually, it won't be able to do anything here, right? So it's like in a cage, you're just moving the chicken around. Like in a cage. Uh, it, it, even worse, around. even worse. You move, you're moving body parts of chickens yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like I'm not adding any kind of value to it. I'm not doing anything. I'm just shuffling. So, so feature-wise, there's the same distribution. I'm just making fake data in the dumbest way possible. And I'm trying to train a model. And I'm just saying that, is it going to work? That's the that's question. Why should it work at all? It might not work, actually. We, might, must, oh, we will see the result. See it no, no, OK. That one, <laughs> that one is for 
if you test the thing that I just asked him to tell, it's like it's not for the real. Mm. The, if I scroll down, you will see. Uh -huh. So you haven't seen that. Even I haven't seen that because I just trained it. Now my question is, should it work? And if anyone say yes or no, then I said well, I will say why. I'm not so, so, so shall it work? Meaning that the model will be able to identify yes the fake data which is obtained by shuffling the original that one data. is working apparently. So the model kind of can tell it can kind of say this is a shuffled one, this is not shuffled one. Mm -hmm. The model can do that because no network. If I do that, will the model be able to say, no, see here, then I t ask, then I tr ask the model to predict on the actual data. The pure one will be the one that has been used here as a, as a, as a negative, as a, I don't know, normal sample. The only thing which I added here will be all those odd layer. I'm just saying that if I add all those odd layer, getting back to the actual credit card data, Will the model be able to tell to say that those new added data are are outlay or not? I miss one part. When you shuffle the attribute, uh, the new class label would be outlier. For the shuffled one, would For be outlier. Yes. One is outlier. Okay. Yes. So it means they they haven't seen any kind of outlier at all because I completely remove that, right. remove all those uh, outlier from it. Yeah. Then I shuffle it. So basically, uh, usually it's unbalanced data. Here is not anymore because it because we add the shuffle ones. Yes. Now it's more balanced. Yes. So I guess the accuracy could improve because now we have a more balanced data. But the thing here is like that. See, that's the one. The pure. There is no at layer in my no knowledge for. I completely remove them first. So it is not like. If yes, the one way is like I, I keep those uh, out there in my data, I still have their label as anomaly. I'm saying it's, it's not, it's not, this distribution is super off. Adding shuffle one would be the same thing that you said. But if I completely remove them, then I shuffle. So you have a pure normal data. Yes. Then you train outlier detector based on shuffled data. Based on being able to tell the difference between normal and shuffled one, will it work to actually identify any kind of outlier in my data? In the original data? In the original no, data. Not, not cleaned one? No, or original one. So that's what I'm saying. So because you train it based on a more balanced data, now that you go back and then test it with your original data, I guess now you get a better result. Should I? Better result, better than what? Better than Zero. without uh, shuffle one. Without shuffle one is completely pure. It There's is, no but, other but there. it's like a, it's like ninety nine percent. It's hundred uh, percent. No, what it's I'm saying is like ninety nine percent class A, one percent class B. If I remove the shuffle one, it's hundred percent positive. Oh, I'm See so here, uh, uh, if you look at the data here, I removed yeah. all those out there from it first. So the model hasn't seen any of it at all. But so um, you have pure data and you're labeling it a class and you have a identity function. Neural network, please Mr. Multilayer Perceptron, label this thing, but it only has one class to label. There's no error symbol here or in there. Then that's why I'm adding a shuffle one and then I'm, I'm creating a new class, right? But in the first... In the first one, if I yeah. just remove it, the pure one is just one class classification. The only thing I can do is just I can uh, pass it to one stream and ask him to do anything with it. But it's I not sure what it's I think if you ask your, well, if, um, I, if I got it right there, it says multi layer perceptron, right? ML yes. Yeah. 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 So, but there's no nothing to back propagate on. Uh, it, there is, right? I'm making, a label for whether it's I'm, I'm making a new label, and I'm saying all the shuffle one are class number one. The pure one and class number zero. Then so, there okay. is a label. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood. So it depends on whether, like, if, if your features are um, independent, then it wouldn't work, right? Because your histograms are the same, like you said. Um, 
the so the opposite. If 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 the features are correlated, then then there is a chance that in outliers the correlation pattern is different. Right, that's what I'm saying. If if it's independent, then like you wouldn't expect it to work. But no opposite. Yes. Yeah, yeah, if it is independent, then shuffling doesn't. That's true because anything. even I haven't seen that, right? Yeah. So so if if for it to work at all, it would have to have some correlation. So, so see here, I just it just saying that based on all those of the year, he managed to find almost sixty eight percent of them, but ten thousand here is still anomaly in that all the data that they had. Right, so it still is good, but the thing that I'm gonna do here is like that. See, so it still can say we don't have any kind of information about the data. If you look at that, it managed to make a good number here. So the precision and recall, if you look at it, is not okay here. It's not. It's like recall was 71 person. Now I'm just saying that okay, maybe the reason is is super bias toward one because the data because it hasn't seen the actual data that's why I generate the other one which is predict probably uh, which is uh, they didn't get in the probability of the model again and instead of having 0.5 as a threshold I'm setting 95 to be threshold f1 score is 50 Four. It, I did nothing, right? I I just remove all those other layer, shuffle them, train the model, and then uh, for the prediction, I said if anything is more than ninety five point ninety five, treat it as a layer, and you can see you can see the result here. See, is it working? And that's the whole credit card information, right? Can I relay a question and a comment yes. from online? The question is, it was five minutes ago, maybe you have already addressed it. Are you shuffling the features in the feature vectors or are you shuffling across feature vectors? Per See, that was the code. Uh, it, it's here, actually. Uh, per feature, I'm shuffling them. So I'm just saying feature number one, shuffle all the value. Go to feature number two, shuffle the value. So that's the only thing I'm doing. Each feature independently shuffle the value. So then you, I will have lots of sample that all this value comes from maybe different samples. Okay, so the comment is, if you shuffle the features at random, the network should learn about the distribution of values that are allowed for the real data. That's a good assumption. That's a good maybe realization based on seeing the result, right? So that was the question. If I do that, will that thing happen? That, because that's a claim, right? That's a, actually that's a, actually a bold claim. If I generate data, will I force the model to learn the distribution of the data or not? And I didn't use any kind of kind of like a magic here or any kind of sophisticated model but just a normal neural network. So the thing is like that. Here, and that technique, you won't see it anywhere because you can't find any fundamental reason for it. But that's the thing actually we tested here actually uh, a year ago or two years ago because we want to come up with some uh, uh, kind of like a, let's say, fraud data. We just use the shuffle one. And we just let it go, and we just saw the result. And as you can see, the result is not that bad, and it might be actually good. It's comparable to maybe one of the best things that we got from one SVM and isolation first. And because it's almost 9 p.m., you can think about it again. Try to digest. <laughs> but that's that's what, that's what I say is one of the, my stepping stone for the next session because. I generate the data based on the domestic possible, and I managed to get good number. Now, if you 
try any heuristic one. Try to your imagination and add new data based on the thing that you know about the data. What will happen again? Basically, if you have an unlabeled data, you can use the same technique to label. Yes, if you if you have any assumption about it, if you say that's all pure, so I have one class. The only thing I have to do is generate the other one, generate the fake one. And as your own exercise, if you want to see even better result, uh, here, I have to reconnect for yourself, okay, because it's 9 p.m., shuffle HCOM individually and train a model based on it and then combine the result. Then you will be surprised. Here, I shuffle everything and I train a model. Oh no, I'm just saying that shuffle one, train a model. Mm -hmm. Shuffle the second one, train a model. Shuffle. So per, per dimension, make a model, and then do a voting system. Do the average. So, so it will be better. <laughs> you can report it on the Slack. To, after the session, go home, and then do different. Here, see, I use 0 0.95. Then once you average, you can say, Maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.8, you can choose different things and see what will be the result and share it on the Slack. And that's the last exercise here. Uh, okay, the actual last would be because I, we have all the MNIST and KDCAP data, try all this technique on that as well for your homework.